and the other forward as he stands between the past and the future year. In 46 BC, Julius Caesar invited an Egyptian astronomer to help recalculate the Roman year. The new system of measurement became known as the Julian calendar. The final changes were made at the end of the 16th century when Pope Gregory XIII eliminated 10 days from the year to keep it in sync with the seasons. It was renamed the Gregorian in his honor and is still the calendar we use today all across the globe. But in many countries, religion and culture still dominate, and ancient calendars set the dates for traditional festivals. When we return, Chinese New Year, two weeks of symbolic celebrations centered on family, friends, traditional feasts, and a most colorful parade. Between late January and the end of February, the Chinese celebrate the traditional New Year known as both the Lunar New Year and as Chun Jie, the Spring Festival. It's a celebration that lasts 15 days, the most colorful and most important holiday of the Chinese year. New Year bring everybody together, friends and family, like a reunion. If you were far away from your family, you can go back and like, you know, we share our thoughts and hopes and wishes. It's very festive and colorful and it's, I feel so much joy. The Chinese have been celebrating the New Year since 2000 BC, though the celebrations were held at different times under different emperors. Just like in Rome, politics played a role in setting a date for the new year. In 1911, the Republic of China was established under Sun Yat-sen. Soon after, the Gregorian calendar was adopted and the new year celebrated on January 1st. But in 1927, the National Congress under Chiang Kai-shek returned to its roots and recognized the celebration of Chinese New Year. In 1949, the festival was declared an official holiday. Today, Chinese New Year is celebrated at the beginning of Zheng Yua, the first month in what is known as Nung Li, or the farmer's calendar. It is the longest holiday of the year and the one with the most elaborate preparations. A person has to uh, abstain from any physical relationships. Uh, he has to purify everything, including his speech. Everything that is spoken is spoken in a positive. The whole house has to be totally cleaned, and all the premises around it had to be cleaned for the new year. Then there is the shopping for all the different goods that would be needed. City streets are crowded with people buying new clothes and shoes. They shop for the best firecrackers, special ingredients for the festive meal, and symbolic fruit, flowers, and seeds. Red is the color of happiness and abundance. Auspicious symbols written on red paper hang in every store window and home. Red color is like meaning like good fortune uh, according, I mean, as Chinese, you know, customs, like everything is red color, even for weddings, red color, Chinese New Year, definitely red. And we put like the red paper outside the door to, you know, before the New Year, like there is a Chinese character called Fu. Fu is like good fortune. So we put it there, meaning that we have a fortune coming in. The arrival of the New Year wasn't always received with such good fortune. One ancient Chinese legend tells the story of the wild beast, Nian, who appeared each year at the end of winter, attacking and killing villagers. To scare the beast away, they used the color red, loud noise, and bright light 
and the customs of Chinese New Year were born. But Nian is also the Chinese word for year. And much like a monster, the year was something to be feared. Flood, famine, and sickness took many lives. So on the new year, families gathered for a reunion to see who had survived and to wish the best for the next monster year to come. Today, the tradition continues as families celebrate the new year together. It's a time to honor ancestors, often by kneeling in front of a specially created altar. Younger generations often bow to older ones to show respect. It is a celebration of life, a celebration of remembrance. It is a gathering together, not only of the living, but those that have passed on. It is a link to the past, it is a link to culture, it's a link to their traditions. And so it's also a time that you bring your family together. In San Francisco, the Lowe family gathers together every year. They share the sweetness of candied fruits, vegetables, and seeds. Elders pass out small red envelopes called Lei Si or Hang Bao. Each has a New Year greeting on the outside and money on the inside. I give it to my friends, the lucky money, and say, oh, Chinese New Year, lucky money. I love doing that. Because I, I love his red envelope, it's just good fortune, and I think that is good positive energy. The Lowe's enjoy the New Year feast while sitting at a round table, a symbol of unity. Plate after plate of food makes up the most elaborate and symbolic meal of the year. A whole fish stands for abundance. A chicken for good luck, served with both head and tail, since everything must have a beginning and an end. We use bap choy because of the, the name, meaning uh, hundreds of items of wealth. We would use a lettuce, the term is sheng cai, and sheng cai means to grow and beget wealth. Mm -hmm. Whatever is start. There's the uh, celery for diligence, garlic, which is shun, for um, mathematical intelligence, and green onion, chung, for intelligence or smart. So as you are consuming all of this food, you are consuming aspects of wealth, posterity, prosperity, and so forth. From farmer to scholar, they understand the symbol. But farmer may not understand the words. But from farmer to scholar, they can understand the same universal form. I think this is so important, you know. And if they feel connected to that, and they feel joy to the symbol. After the festive meal, people take to the streets, filling this first day of the new year with the explosion of firecrackers. The celebration continues for two weeks. There are traditional ceremonies and days of rest. It's a time to visit friends or go to the temple. And on the 15th day, the Lantern Festival arrives, signaling the end of the holiday. Lion dancers and beautiful dragons wind their way through the streets in a lively parade. A tradition that can be traced back to 200 BC, when the emperors of the Han Dynasty lit their palace with lanterns to pay tribute to the universe. The city glows with light. Firecrackers fill the air with flashes of noise and smoke. A colorful end to a very symbolic new year. It's the warmth, the color, the festive, bring everybody together, sharing the same thing, you know, or sharing the feeling of making everything better. I think that's important for our life. For me, you know, I feel there's a new energy. 
new. It's like always like a new. It's like every new year is like a new beginning. When we return, the eerie blast of a ram's horn heralds the arrival of the Jewish New Year.